Houston, uh, and Quality Bay, Pierce, the Eagle has landed. I told you in my email, I'm afraid to have kids. I think that's terrible. <sighs> you know, I, I couldn't, if I, if I had a kid tell me they saw something, that'd be it for me. You know, I can't even protect myself. How can I protect my child? Before I go any further with this interview, guys, you, you may hear a bit of giggling coming from upstairs. That's my, my little boy. Um, I can't seem to get them out of the house. One's out of the house, one's in the house. Um, so, yeah, you may hear that, but you won't hear it in the interview because the interview's already it's been filmed, the interview. And this is me just saying thank you to the two new patrons of the channel. Eli, thank you very much, my friend. You didn't send me what you wanted art-wise, so I kind of went with your name. Um, look, I looked the name up, and it's a, it's a Hebrew name. Um, and I, I changed my logo for you. Not permanently, but just, just in this kind of picture. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you let me know what, if you want some actual personal art from your mind you want me to do something photoshop for you i'm glad to do that for you my friend so eli has been in touch and he said you know alien that you don't have to do anything for me i appreciate that but i like to do something for the new patrons so because you said that you're into technology and you're quite techy along with the ufo stuff and alien i went with my logo uh, and i kind of um, integrated it with all this circuitry and that for you so I hope you enjoy that my friend and thank you once again and also uh, wreaking havoc 215 which is actually John who I'm interviewing now um, I'd already agreed to the interview before he became a patron by the way but uh, John your art you will see in the interview when you um, reveal the secret, which people have already seen it in in the in the thumbnail. So, uh, but yeah, enjoy the interview, guys. I'm Alien Addict. Make sure you get them thumbs up. Good evening, folks. Welcome to Alien Addict. We have John uh, on tonight. Now, John. It, this is a weird one for me because you didn't want to come. You, you gave me a story, but it was kind of you just wanted to share the story. And then I did the video the other night. And I think that might have twisted your arm a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it, uh, that's what I find interesting. When you, when you send me, well, somebody sends me an email and with a story like yours, and you just wanted to share the story originally, mm -hmm. uh, but not actually come on. That that intrigues me. That is why I've kind of, I feel like I've badgered you into coming on a little bit. <laughs> but uh, this story needs to be told. I agree. So, I want you to take me back, well, the to the beginning, to when this started. Now I've read the email through, so I do know the bits, but I need to get a really good picture of this. So, okay. let's hear it. So about, uh, it was 1995, um, my family took a cruise and they invited me to go along with them. Um, I decided to stay home. I figured having an empty house was much better than going on a cruise, <laughs> which, oh, definitely. Is probably, which is probably a bad decision now I look back on it. But, <laughs> but uh, So yeah, I had the house to myself. It was, I think it was a Saturday. It was a Saturday or a Friday. I know it was on the weekend. But uh, you know, I was out playing basketball with my friends. And uh, you know, a regular day, came home like 11 o'clock at night, took a shower, you know, everything. I was in a good mood. I had the house to myself. I was like really upbeat. Uh, it was nice, you know, having a good time. So I take a shower. I go into my room. You know, all the lights are on. I'm like, you know. I'm getting ready to hop in bed to watch some TV. And as soon as I sit in my bed, um, I'm sitting against the headboard, facing my TV. I haven't even turned it on yet. And like my bed just starts vibrating, like very slowly. And uh, it vibrated more and more. 
and I started shaking. And at some point after I started shaking, it started like pretty much jumping off the ground. Um, not completely off the ground, but there was probably one leg of the bed on the ground at a time. Like it was just like all over the place. And uh, I was actually holding on. It was pretty nuts. And then it stopped completely. And it was just like, you know, that was it. Um, I don't believe in ghosts at the time. But I just assumed it was a ghost. And I kind of brushed it off. Like, even though it was pretty nuts, um, I wasn't too worried about it. And then, like, three seconds later, I get this, like, this uh, some weird feeling just rushed through my body. Like, all my senses were, like, on high alert. Like, I almost knew what was about to happen before I actually seen anything at this point. Like, like it's, it's hard to explain. Like, I'm, like I kind of knew. Um, so, you know, after the bed started shaking, I get this weird feeling, and I turn my head to the right, like, quickly. And, uh, you know, there's two aliens standing on my roof. Um, their faces were like maybe a couple inches from my window, you know? So like my lights are completely on. I see this clear as day. So like, as I'm turning my head and I get a glance of the first one, my brain like already knew the whole situation, even though this has never happened before. Um, you mean like a deja vu? No, it's just, I, I, like, before I seen them completely, I already knew what was there and what was going to happen. I don't know if it was a deja vu or maybe it happened before that way. I don't know. But the feeling was strong. Like, I barely saw, like, half of the first one's, like, left eye, and my brain just computed that it, there's, you know, something out there, something's about to happen to me, like, quick. So... So I, you know, I turned to the right to my window. You know, I had like a, a, a porch on the first floor in my backyard, and there was like a roof above the porch, so, and that's what they were standing on. Um, I had no clue how they even got up there. You, you couldn't climb it, you know. So they had to come from above, I guess. I don't. I tried to climb that thing personally when I was a kid. I couldn't do it, so. I don't know how they got there, but anyway, there's two of them. There's a, a taller one to the left and a shorter one to the right. The shorter one was standing in front of the taller one slightly. But I didn't get the, I wasn't able to turn my head completely to see the second one because as soon as I saw the first one, my eyes like locked on immediately. And uh, I saw the, the face, everything, every little detail you can take from looking somebody in the face. I have all that, like, what did everything. Like? Uh, you know, kind of like a typical gray, but but not. Um, the shape of the head was, you know, I look at it now, like, the shape of the head was, like, perfect. It was too perfect, like, from the... It had like a long chin, you know, the head got bigger, but there was no cheekbone, jawbone, temple. There's nothing. There's like no eyebrows, no, you know, wrinkles, no lips. Uh, there's nothing, man. This is like two big black eyes, two holes, and like a straight slit for a mouth. But their face was like, to me, it looked like their face was pretty flat. And their eyes were almost like sitting on top of their face. Um, originally, when it happened, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Was was there any movement to the face at all? So one move, they didn't budge an inch. They didn't flinch. They didn't blink. They didn't move a single hair, which to me was more creepy. Like, did you say <laughs> you saw just, one of them from the side? No, no. While, while I was turning, they're both like had their faces almost against my window, side by side. So I saw both of them 
Um, I saw this well, the second one I saw like in my peripheral vision because once I locked on eyes with the first one, it was like a it was like a tunnel vision, but I can still see around me in my peripherals. So I can still see the smaller one, but there's like a tunnel vision effect going on. And I'm just like, it felt like my heart stopped. Like I, I, I lost my breath. It was a. Uh, was it just intense. faces or anybody? I didn't, I couldn't see the, the body because, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was nighttime and, you know, my lights were on. So it had to have been pretty short, man. I mean, like their head to body ratio was like, their head might have been the third of their body. Like, they're pretty, you know, cause I used to hang out on that roof. My little brother in the room next to me would climb out of his window, you know, and climb into mine. So the roof's only a couple of feet from the bottom of the window. Is Maybe anybody else in the house with you? No. That's, that's the thing. Everyone is on that cruise I was telling you about. So I've been stuck on this thing. Like, did they know they were on a cruise? You know what I mean? That's that's the kind of questions that get me. So, so they're yeah, on the room, and you're looking at these two um, alien, gray-looking creatures. Um, mm -hmm. What happened next? <clears throat> well, I'm, I had to stare in this thing's eyes for like 20 seconds. Um, but as I was doing that, I had another intense feeling. And I turned my head to the left, like, really quickly. And I looked directly at the bottom of my door. Like, I didn't look at my door. I looked at the bottom of my door. Um, I had a huge gap. My door was messed up. So there was a big gap between the bottom of the door and the floor. So I can see a little bit into my hallway. And as soon as I looked, like, two seconds later, I saw two pair of legs step forward to my door their shadows were projecting into my room um i have my hallway light on still um when i saw that i was just like oh shit <laughs> you know like batman <laughs> like you know um my reaction i'm not too happy about because i just threw my blankets over myself and got into the fetal position and just laid there. Um, How I wish I could. I was 15. I think I'd have done the same. I think I'd do that now. You know, but now I'm like, what if I got up and walked towards the window? What if I did this? What if I did that? You know, I feel like I took the, the weakest route possible, but it was just a natural reaction. For some reason, the scariest thing to me was them actually touching me. That was like my main concern, like, you know, just their hands touching me. I don't know why that was such over everything else. I did not want that to happen. Uh, so I laid there maybe for like 15 seconds. And then the next thing you know, I'm waking up on my living room, in my living room the next morning on my couch. Um, I'm face down on my couch and my legs are like harshly hanging off. And I remember my shorts were on backwards. Maybe I did that the night before. I don't know. But, and I remember I felt like I had like the worst hangover in the world. I was in such a daze. I was confused. Um, I remember that morning, it was like so gray outside too. Like birds were chirping. Like it was a beautiful day. And I just woke up. Just in a like shit. Yeah. Like, what the heck just happened, you know? It was like a second later, like I went under the sheets, covered myself, and like that, I'm waking up the next morning. And, you know, while I was under the sheets, I was just waiting to feel them grab me through the sheet, you know? Like I was just absolutely terrified about that. That was, I don't know why that's, you know, I mean, it's a messed up thing, but like in my head, that was like my number one concern. Like I didn't care that they were there or whatever. I just did not want them to physically touch me. So I'm going to ask you this because your parents had gone away mm -hmm. and you say you'd been at a football game. I was playing basketball. Basketball. Yeah. Did you drink anything after with your mates or? 
oh, I came right home. The, the, the basketball court's like a 15 minute walk from my house at the time. We walked back and forth all the time. You know, we'd all meet. I had like 10 friends in the neighborhood. We all walked there together, played basketball, walked back, you know. Because I'm asking myself as a, as a young kid at 15 years old, but I know the rest of the email as well. So I know mm-hmm. how this has affected you and the other stuff that's to come. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I, I suppose you're not going to get them feelings when you look at these two figures. Um, but when you say that they had no features, it's almost like the masks. And I was thinking, oh. you, you, is I, could it be no. a prank? You know what? That would be something I would consider if my bed wasn't jumping off the ground. Yeah. Seconds I about I the bed. Them. You know what I mean? Like if that bed thing didn't happen, I would have been freaked out, but I might have approached whatever and, you know, just definitely no mask. It's, there's there's I, I no there's give like I'm more sorry, of an image of this featureless creature that we know as a grey, because people always explain them differently. But I have I've seen them in um, I mean there's ah, what's that there's a fire in the sky kind of exp, Travis Walton explains them. Well, it's explained in that that they are in suits. And I think Travis does say something about that they could have been suits. Would you say that they looked like this possibly wasn't a living ob- a living creature? Uh, as far as what, like... When you look... So when you looked at, at this grey... Yeah. Alien, I'm going to call it a being. Um, and when you looked at it straight in its eyes, did it look synthetic? Uh, it looked like robotic. It, yes. Um, and I didn't think that at first. You know, I just chalked it up as they were, you know, whatever from somewhere else. But. You know, I, I think about this stuff almost, almost on a daily basis. So I'm constantly breaking down what I see, almost like a crime scene. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what the heck happened to me. So I think somehow they were created and not the actual beings themselves. Um, I say that because just to the fact that her face, like, it would be impossible for her mouth to even move. I mean, it was just like a slit. There's no muscle definition there's nothing at all it's it's crazy how little features there were it was just a slit two holes and you know big black eyes have you ever drawn it yeah but i can't get it exact where i'm happy with it i'm a decent drawler but when it comes to drawing that i'm like so anal that i kind of just gave up just because it was just if you've got any of them drawings, I wouldn't mind if you send me one. I could probably put it in the, the video. Um, okay. Or if you can yeah. have a little think and see if you can kind of kind of get what I'd, I'd love to know what so, they actually well, look like because everybody report, everybody has a different um, way of explaining what a gray alien looks like. Yeah, uh, and I've seen. Uh so many pictures and I've never seen exactly what I've seen but you know I don't think the actual beings themselves um just because I mean there was no sway to their movement there was no reactions when I saw them there was they weren't breathing like I didn't see no like zero movement at all I, and that to me just in the fact like it didn't have any eyelids at all. Like, there's no, like, even if you, like, you smile, you have, like, you know, wrinkles in your face or whatever, there's absolutely nothing. Not a cheekbone, not a nose. Like, the face was, like, flat. To I'm, me, it seems like you're a creative. Have you ever seen a film called Communion? No. Okay, you need to watch it. 
because um, the the greys in that I, I I've not read the book. Um, it would take me probably a year to <laughs> to read it. I'm dyslexic and it, it but um, apparently the the greys that was depicted in that and this is based on a true story um they have no features what's they have no kind of muscle or anything like that the the way they look is almost they it almost looks like a mask you know what who got it close as to like what looks close to that is south park if you ever seen what the aliens look like on south park oh yeah <laughs> that's pretty damn their skin was darker. It was like a darker gray. And maybe the heads were a little wider at the top, but just that blank, just flat face, like, you know. And then also, the two that came to my bedroom door, they didn't walk down my hallway. I would have heard them. I had like a hardwood floor hallway. My floor creaks. Even so, I would have seen. How did you know it were two at the bedroom door? I, I literally seen them step to my door one at a time. And the way they did it was like, they weren't shuffling their feet. It was like almost like a military, like one step forward, left, right, the next one step forward, left, right, and then they didn't move. But they didn't walk down my hallway. I would have seen the shadows of them halfway down the hallway, you know? Because they, like I said, the gap under my door was so big you know, I can see maybe from where my bed was, I could easily see a foot into the hallway. And uh, it's like they stepped out of nowhere. You know, it's like they just like stepped out of a hole, like just right in front of my door. Like, I don't even know how they got in my house. I, re- I lock, we lock everything, you know, like, like how do they get in my house? How do they get on my roof? Like, well, it's just... <laughs> I think if they can get, come here from a different, um, planet you know yeah. i don't know if i else. really uh i really believe in that scenario well, um, you don't, so you don't believe that they're aliens i believe we call them aliens but see in the beginning i thought i was one of many people like i just assumed there was a large majority of people this was happening to i haven't you know, this happened 25 years ago. There's not too many abduction stories that are um, believable that I hear too often. It's like slim to none. So I'm yeah, in the belief now. Annoys you. So I'm in the belief now, like, I might be a minority. And if I'm one of few, I don't see someone traveling that far to mess with me in my house for a couple hours. You know, I think they're closer closer than uh, we think that just don't make sense to me traveling like i don't even know like light years how far anything is i'm not i'm not really specific on that but wherever they're if they come from somewhere far it's going to be far you know and it's i don't even know how dimensions work but i always thought that could be a possibility because maybe they hop in and out of dimensions i don't know but, you know. Were you into the whole sci-fi thing? Yeah. Be- yeah, be- yeah. Be- before this happened. Yeah. You know, I was, it was usually stuff on History Channel. You know, there was no, I think it was 1995. I think just got the internet maybe a year or two before that. So it was like documentaries I would see on TV. It would be the same abduction stories. You know, all the ones... I guess it was like the 60s or 70s, or you know, the the one you're talking about, the fire in the sky, like that story. Um, it wasn't too many stories, but I was interested in it, you know. I remember I bought the VHS tape of the alien autopsy, which I thought was completely I think I fake, did. but <laughs> I've got the um, it's probably not, it's probably gonna be blurred out, but I don't know if you can see that. That is, oh, yeah, I see it. Yep, that's the one. Yep. I think it, I, that is uh. 1995. Well, isn't that weird? 1995. Wow. Um, that magazine. I got that in 1995. I found it in my garage the other day. I was cleaning mm-hmm. it out. Um, so the story doesn't stop there. And I, I probably should have said this at the beginning 
of the video, but this is a this is a, has affected the last twenty the, the twenty five years of your life. This yeah. has really really affected you. Yeah, um, so, when was the <clears throat> next strange thing that happened to you? Uh, let's see. Um, I think it was two thousand. No, actually. If you don't know the dates, it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't know what day it is today. A couple of weeks after this, um, I was playing basketball at the same place before at night. And uh, it, was, it was like clear sky, a lot of stars. And from the right horizon, you know, I think I'm watching a shooting star, you know, go across the sky. Steady, nice and slow. I'm watching it. I've never seen a shooting star before. So I'm trying to tell my buddy I'm playing with to look. And he's uh he's like flipping out because he thinks I'm gonna steal the basketball from him. So the guy never looks. I'm like screaming at him, you know. But so it's going across. As soon as it gets to the top of the sky, it, it completely stops. It stops for like a good 30 seconds. It's above me. But it looks like a star, so it's definitely far out. But it definitely stopped. It felt like it stopped above me, but it really couldn't have been so far away. I don't believe it had anything to do with me. But uh, after it sat there for like 30 seconds, it shot off across the other half of the sky in like two seconds. 20 times faster than it went across the first half. Wow. Um, I don't... You know, I don't think that had anything to do with me. If it was closer and I can actually see, like it was in our atmosphere, I would, but it did stop above me. But but, but you're not sure if they are from other planets? But the, only reason I, the only reason I say that is because if they're traveling that far, I think they would more people would be involved in it. Like, more people who encountered what I did, there would be more of them. Well, this, it just doesn't... Like, there's it doesn't a lot make of people sense. claiming to have been visited. You know? Yeah, I know, but... You don't I'm believe... Probably, I'm probably the worst skeptic out of everybody, man. Like, I'm, I don't believe 99% of the stuff I hear. Just because I have my own reference. Uh, I, it, it makes me pretty... I think there's different people. I think there's people who have experiences. I think there's people that have a minor experience and embellish it because no one wants to listen to a little story, you know. Like, I tried to contact Wufan at one point. They're like, oh, that happened too long ago. I'll just give you a, a case number. That's all we can do for you. Yeah. So I think people embellish it, and I think there's people who flat out lie. And uh, I think... Did you? It was. It wasn't just that that made you contact Goo. Uh, I, said, I said Goof on then. Uh, Move on. <laughs> uh, I contacted them. I was like 30, 32, and the only reason I contacted them because at that point I felt like I needed some type of counseling or something, you know, because I was thirty-two and this is like the very first time I ever lived on my own and I didn't realize how much this affected me you know so this is so, 17 years later yes and um when I lived by myself for the first time I was like oh shit I got a problem <laughs> I need to call somebody they try to find help and that's I slowly started contacting people but you know a lot of times I contact them like I emailed you and, and then the situation felt too real, and I'll get scared, and I'll just back off. You know. Yeah, this no, is like, this is like one of the first times where I'm just like, "Eff it." Um, there's nothing I can do but share my story. So, so I'm glad you. Can, I'm glad you asked someone to share this story. Um, but <clears> I can't. I want. I feel like I. I, I want to. I want to help you out and I want the audience that are watching this to help you out. Like in the comment section, the community that that we've got on alien addict, I think is brilliant. You know, there's, there's very little trolls and you know, they, they usually troll for a little bit and then they get bored. 
Um, yeah. But I, I, so you sent a um, out, you were, you were asking for help from Mufon, and you said something about was it a, a, a lady that got in contact with you? Yeah, I uh, after Mufon kind of rejected me. Uh, I talked to another man after that. I haven't, I can't remember who he was at all, but he referred me to uh, Kathleen Martin. She's the, uh, I think the niece of the uh, Betty Hill. She's like a researcher, and I got her, I got her number. And we talked one time, never talked to her again, because <laughs> uh, everything was she was saying, which was freaking me out a little bit more, you know. Um, I told her my story to that point. You know, she was like, most likely this has been happening before and still happening after. You know, that's something I totally reject and <laughs> try not so, to think about. So, how many incidences have there been when you that you you can recall that uh, the not it's not just a dream. It's something that you think is definitely real that's happened to you there's been a bunch but i'm not even sure if they're alien related or not i don't care i want to hear them <laughs> like um because the one... I think all paranormal activity whether it be alien ghost related it's all linked uh-huh yeah, actually, before we go further, I wanted to mention something about the original incident that okay. I forgot to mention. Is, um, when I woke up the next morning, you know, I felt, you know, hazy and I was all messed up. So I, I took a shower and oh yeah, I, I found I had like a scab in the lower part of my back. And this, it burns. I can not forget how much it burned. It was unexpected. I was just taking a shower. Like the shampoo ran down my back as soon as I hit it. It was intense burning. And I had like a decent sized scar, probably an inch long, like a scab. I never equated that to the situation until almost 20 years later. But <laughs> that, uh, you know, to this day, I still have a scar. And that just happened. That happened at that that point. Yeah, yeah. And this, you know, I woke up on the couch, took a shower, and that was the first time I ever felt this. And I was like, how the hell do I have a scar there? What happened? It didn't even dawn on me at that time. It had anything to do with, you know, anything until I saw a blog, like, you know, 15, 18 years later, maybe. When I saw one person had one comment, and she said, I think – you know, aliens took my tailbone. I got abducted last night. I took a shower. And I had a burning sensation, and there's a scab at the at my tailbone, and I believe they took my tailbone. That's what her blog said, and that's when I realized it could have had something to do with that. It was like mind blowing. You know, it was like. Were you in any pain, other than the soreness of the scab? I was in no pain, but that, it burned for weeks, man. <laughs> it just burned. So, you know, at the time I found out, I read that blog many years later, my girlfriend at the time looked at it and, you know, she felt around her and she just started like crying. And she's like, feel, feel my tailbone and then feel yours. I didn't really see much difference, you know. I have you no. Know, proof that it's missing but I mean she was hysterical like as soon as she touched my tailbone she just lost it and uh, you, she said have you ever thought about said, getting an x-ray yeah but I don't know how to approach the situation I you know I, was, I can't go in there and say hey I think an alien took my tailbone can you take some x-rays you know I mean well you could I don't know you could say you sat on something many years ago and it's just caused a little bit of discomfort and, you see yeah. anything? Also, sometimes I'm kind of hesitant about that stuff because, you know, it's just a, solidifies my story even more and it makes it like even more real for me. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, 
I want to know everything that happened at the same time. I don't. Yeah, so I know. It's a I mean, conflict, it, took a lot, man. it took a lot for you to come on here because you said you don't want your you don't want your friends finding out, you don't want your family finding out about that. You've never discussed it with any of them. A couple friends, um, very vague though, and just by the reactions, I didn't proceed with details. You know, I had a few ex girlfriends I had to tell. You know, I, I was in a position where. You know, there's issues in the relationship from my anxiety or whatever. I just had to tell them. Two of them, believe me, one didn't. <laughs> um, one of them actually experienced something with me, I think. <laughs> but, uh, what was that? Uh, this was like 2005. I was living with my girlfriend at the time. We were probably, we lived like 10 minutes from the house where it happened and uh you know i go to sleep like a regular night and i get this feeling like i'm regaining my vision it's not like i'm waking up it's like i'm getting my vision back and i'm sitting up in a bed and i have a can of pepsi in my hand upside down and it's pouring all over me and i'm like completely paralyzed completely like I can move my eyes and I'm just like what the f <laughs> what, is, what is this what the hell is going on so I can I'm looking at my girlfriend and she's like freaking out and remember I'm trying to like scream and like yell at her and like nothing's happening and the soda is pouring directly on me it's just pouring and pouring as soon as that soda emptied I was able to move again absolutely crazy and she claims that she saw three people outside the window. I didn't see that. So, what? Just just three normal people? Oh. She said three kids or three teenagers. She she said three people were outside the window. Now this might have been like two or three in the morning. Um, I didn't see it because she said that happened while I was like paralyzed, but. I tried in my brain, I try to think of every scenario on why I would climb into bed and open the can of soda upside down. Like, it's like it was in my hand and I just opened it from the bottom. You know, I, I think even if I was like sleepwalking or something, I don't think you would op hold a can upside down, open it upside down. You know, it don't make no sense to me. I can't even imagine doing that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I don't have like visual proof that that has anything to do with anything. But I kind of keep it in that general area because I can. I'm assuming. You know, I, I didn't see anything she did, but uh, but the second that can was empty, I was able to move. You know, it's messed up to kind of say, but I feel like they're messing with me. You know what I mean? But why? You know, the the things I saw in my house were completely emotionless, like. You know, like robots, I can't see. It's just, it's a weird, weird. It's just, I can't even explain it, man. You know, it's... You mentioned that you'd seen a ghost. Yes. In the email. Yes. Yes. Yep. That happened in uh, 2000, 2000, 2001. It was the same guy I was playing basketball with. Previously, he lived like five houses from me, you know, I, I don't I didn't even believe in ghosts at all, even though I chalked up my bed is jumping as a ghost. I just couldn't think what else it would be. So, you know, it didn't scare me. So I'm sleeping at this guy's house. I'm laying on the couch and I wake up and uh, there's a lady standing in front of me, like two to three feet away from me. I remember I was laying on the couch on my side, I just opened my eyes and she was there. Like her whole body was like bright white, almost glowing, you know, and slightly transparent, but not not really. And she was staring at me. And I like, I remember I rubbed my eyes, like trying to wake up, you know, and I sit straight up and we're just like staring at each other now. I couldn't move. I was just like in shock. I wasn't scared, but I was just like, 
at this point, like, why is this stuff like, you know, there's a constantly something happening. And uh, it was, she was there for like 30 seconds and kind of vanished. I wake my buddy up and I'm a little startled. I explain to him what happened. He shows me a picture of his aunt who hung herself in her second floor bedroom maybe 20 to 30 years prior. I can't remember exactly how long before it happened that she did it, but she hung herself in the house. He showed me a picture of her. I don't, even believe, hey, I don't even believe in ghosts. I don't, I'm not really like a religious person. I don't believe like in the physical heaven or hell. I don't, I didn't believe in ghosts. I st- still saw one, you know, it was. You still don't believe in ghosts. I have to now, right? <laughs> I have no choice, you know, it's, I've seen one. It's... You know, I saw a very similar thing, apparently, when I was four or three years old. My mom used to tell me that I used to come into her room. And I used to I used to tell her I'd see, seen a white lady. My dad was at sea. He was in the Merchant Navy. Um, I can't remember this, by the way. And I know it's your interview, but I'm just backing you up on these white ladies. Uh, uh-huh. That's probably a thing. Um, that's what I just said. There's a white lady. And she said, what do you mean? Uh, completely white. And then my mum said that she saw the same thing the night before she had a miscarriage. So... Wow. Wow. And she said, did you explain exactly how you explained that ghost? So I, 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 I don't, I, I mean, if you believe in aliens that are coming from different planets and then you put spiritual spirituality in this, it's a bit weird, isn't it? When you kind of mix the two together. It's very but, weird. It's but weird. I mean, you know, my, my question at the end of the day is, is all this connected somehow? Or am I just constantly experiencing crazy shit? Like, you know, it's been, I think last time I seen something crazy, like a year, about a year ago. Um, you know. What but, happened then? Um, John, I want all the craziness from you. <laughs> I want to get uh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sleeping in bed, you know, on my back. I feel a drop of water hit me, like right here under my nose. I wake up, water splashes in my eyes, water running down my face, like a big drop of water. Is this where you live now? No, previously. And uh, so I wake my face off. I'm looking around like, what the hell's going on? I go back to sleep. Next night, same thing. Water drops, hits me directly in between my nose and lip, runs down my face, splashes in my eye, wakes me up. So I'm like, all right. I already know my ceiling's not leaking. You know, I work in construction. I've done remodeling. I know a leaky ceiling when I see one. But I still got a ladder and a flashlight. I expected the whole thing. It was bone dry. It was like, kind of, the ceiling wasn't leaking at all. So I moved my bed to the other side of the room. Same thing happens for like the next two nights. And then it never happened again. So you moved it to the other side of the room and the exact yes. same thing happened. Two more nights, maybe three more nights. I think it lasted about a week. Like, I'd open my eyes. There's nothing there. You know, it's not like I was dreaming because I'm wiping the water. Like, the splash of the water is waking me up. I'm wiping it off my face. I'm like, what, what, what the hell could that even be? I don't even have a place to even start to even try to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just... what. The, I Googled it. I found one article about people saying it's uh, some sleep condition where you think you feel it. But I've never seen anybody who said that it actually happened to them. You know, like they felt the sensation of water hitting them. Like that's like a sleep thing. But like there's water, I'm wiping water off my face. I'm not like hallucinating, you know. (laughs) I'm like... Wow, like crazy. I was water on my face. It wasn't like threatening. I didn't see anything else around that situation. It was just, how do you, I can't even 
can't even begin to even think of a reason. Do you suffer when it comes to going to sleep? Do you get night terrors or? Uh, no, but I'm afraid to go to sleep. That's Is this uh, like every single night? Yeah. That's probably been going on for the last 10 years. Every single night. I haven't had a good sleep in forever. And if, unless I unless I have company sleep with me, I can kind of relax a little bit. But you know, like I sleep in my living room. I don't even go, I have a one bedroom apartment. I don't even go to my bedroom. Yeah, you talking about? I don't have a bed. I, have, I I won't sleep in there. I can't do it. Now, if I live with a few people, they're all in a house. I have I can sleep fine. But like you know. I, I have problems walking in my bedroom during the daytime. And it, is this all from fifty, uh, from twenty-five years ago? Yep. I have no control over it whatsoever. At all. I try to tell myself, you know, it is what it is, or accept it. The fear just takes over my whole entire. My whole entire body is absolutely no control whatsoever. It's it's like when the sun starts going down, you know, I'm home. Once it gets dark, it's like, okay, I like get in alert mode every night, looking over my shoulder, looking down the hallway, opening doors, and like looking in rooms before I even step in them. It's crazy stuff. Sometimes I'll shower with the curtain open because I get this weird feeling. Like every everyday thing. But it's like, it's so normal at this point. It doesn't seem as messed up as it does as I'm saying it, you know? I'm like in such a routine. Have you ever been hypnotized? I really don't believe in that. You de- it's definitely a thing. I've been, I have been hypnotized before. Well, um, it, it's... It... it um, it's weird, but I don't. It might help you. I've thought about if it. If you see a good hypnotherapist. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if what I'm saying is I don't know if they might. I don't know. I mean, unless you don't want to know what happened. I mean, I don't know if it might. That's why I'm torn because I would love to know everything. That's what half of me says. The other half tells me I don't want to know any details any more than I know. I don't even know if I can handle any more than I'm already dealing with. You know what I'm saying? It's like a tough spot. Like I'm like stuck. You know, because I would love to know the truth. Like, you know, has this happened many times? Was that only one time? Did they know my parents were on vacation? Like, that's a big question. Like, did they know? Was that random? Like, do they, can they follow me? You know, like all, all these questions, like I would like to know, but at the same time, I don't want to know. I don't know if I can mentally handle it. I don't know. It's been a, you know, it's been a struggle. I feel like I live two different lives, man. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Um, you've told friends, but you've not told any family whatsoever. No, I've thought about it, but I, just, I, just, I don't think it's something I want to do. You know. I, I'm hoping that, that people in the comment section might have, I don't know, some advice of, of what to do, because the email that you sent, it, like it kind of really like kind of pulled on my heartstrings as well because I'm think it just it sounded like you are gen genuinely like fucking terrified. Um, yeah. Yeah. uncontrollably I can't even control it. You know, I'm not like a a weak guy. I'm, I I deal with a lot of stuff. I'm a pretty strong person, but when it comes to this that one incident, man, it just consumes everything. I wish I wasn't that way. 
you know. I mean, one thing I will say, and somebody's probably going to correct me on this, but I I don't hear many stories of these these beings hurting people, you know. I think probably curious if anything uh, i mean I, I i don't know what you saw I, I i have a good idea i think just how everything played out i think this is something that's been going on forever because you have to be like you imagine if, if if we took a ship to another planet and we're sneaking into the people's houses and taking them and doing stuff to them You'd have to be pretty arrogant to do that. It wouldn't be, you wouldn't want to start a, you know, I, th- I think it's always been going down. I think somehow they're above us. Like, you know, I, like to come to my house and, and whatever happens, like, it has to be something that's been going on forever, you know. It, it's almost like they're entitled it's the way I view my situation, you know, like no empathy, none, and the lack of emotion and movement, and it was just like they're just going through the motions. I mean, it was like a militarized move to me. It was just like it was organized. It was like there was two on to on the left of me. There's two on the right of me. You know, it was is just like they're just doing their job. Like every day. Like ain't nothing, nothing, nothing special to them. The way I look at it. And you've never seen them since. No, I mean there's a lot of times I, I think I see stuff in the corner of my eye, but when I turn my head, I never see nothing. So I don't know if that's just me being paranoid. I don't know. But I've never seen. You no, know, hopefully I never, never do again. So you don't. And you don't want to find out. Like I said, I, I do, but I don't know if I can handle it. You know, I mean, with the whole situation was probably a minute and 30 seconds. Straight up ruined my life. You know, a minute and 30 seconds. And I have little to no information about what happened. I can't, I don't know if I can handle it. I just, you know, I would like to know, but. The subject just scares me so much. Is I got enough, I think I got enough to worry about as it is. See, uh, see, so, you, so, you, so for 25 years ago, you you had this incident. You've had the spiritual uh, ghost incident and the the coke can and the water. Has there been anything else? Oh uh, yes, uh, there was like a a shadow person, I guess I would call it. That was the strangest, probably the strangest of all things, because that makes, even the water droplet thing, it's pretty strange. This shadow guy made no sense <laughs> whatsoever. So I'm coming home from work. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon. You know, I just got home from work. I go upstairs to the room at the top of the steps, change my clothes. I go out the room, look down the hallway, and there's like a shadow man standing above my bed. Like, he had his arms out. Like he was like, really he's about to do something over my bed. He's reaching over my bed and he turned his head and looked at me. <laughs> like once again, now I'm looking face to face with something crazy, you know what I'm saying? And uh it, it was startled, like it was it was just a shadow, like you know, I couldn't see anything. It was just all one shadow. But the way it turned his head and, like, moved his body, it was startled that I saw it. So I watched this thing jump onto the wall. And as a shadow on the wall, run down my hallway, turn the corner, run down the steps along that same wall going down. And... So, so it, the, uh, it, it was like a person running... A person's shadow running on the wall. Like this. But it would be like in this position and then glide maybe four feet 
then change to this position and then glide another four feet. It was freaking weird. Like it wasn't like a run in. It was like it was like animated. Like it would run pose and then glide and then switch to running position and switch its legs and then glide some more. That's how it moved down the wall. That's the was best it, way I can describe it. Was it a shadow? This is hard to, to explain, but was it, say, if I was in your hallway, running down your hallway normal, but you raised me, but my shadow was there, was it that sort of shadow, or was the shadow... Yeah, yeah that's what it like, was. So, like, 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 like there was an invisible person with a shadow? Yes. But the way it moved was so strange, because it wasn't a smooth running in motion that it would pose in a running motion and then glide without moving its body parts and then after a few feet it would switch it up and then glide some more and it but made when, like a like a when it was looking over your bed was was the shadow on the wall or was it like a no, black it figure? was it was like a black figure standing over my bed it was in the middle of my bedroom it was physically standing next to my bed. It was armed over my bed. And I saw its head turn and look at me. And it made this crazy, like, mechanical noise as it was coming closer to me. Um, I described it as a scene in the Matrix. I remember and that. He takes the pill. So that one scene where the metal goes into his mouth, and it makes like this weird robotic Echo. sound. Yeah, it was like, that's probably dead on. That's the best thing I can, way I can describe it. But like, once again, like, the hell is, <laughs> what is that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. The shadow jump, did the shadow jump into the wall or did the shadow yeah, dis- yeah. No, it jumped into the wall. It turned around and jumped onto the wall. And now I'm like, where the hell did it go? And it's coming towards me along the wall. And it turned in a little corner and went down the wall, down the steps. And I, I ran outside. I was, like, freaked out. I ran outside. And as I ran out of my house, my neighbor was happened to, to be walking from across the street towards me. He was just coming over randomly to see what I was doing. I told him what happened. And, you know, we went back inside and, you know, kind of brushed it off, I guess. But I mean, that's weird, like. Like once again, what the hell is what, uh, like? What am I seeing? It's like that's something I do want to know. Like, does, is this all lumped together into one to one thing? Or I definitely you know? think you need to get answers for yourself. Yeah, but that little stuff don't bother me. I don't think about that. To me, that's little stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's not the the real incident. Even though that stuff might bother me for like a week. Or a couple of days. I'm not afraid of that stuff, you know. So it doesn't really. See, that would freak me out more than the little gray aliens, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm like so terrified of that situation. There's nothing that can equal that kind of fear. It's just, you know. Is it because but... it left a scar, that situation? On your back? It's just the whole thing. I, I, I just don't, I don't know, man. It's, it's a feeling I can't control. It's overwhelming. Um, sometimes it's bad. Like, there's been times I'll, I won't go to sleep. I've lost jobs over this because I won't sleep for, like, a few days. Like, or I'll wait till the sun comes up, and then I'll go to sleep. But I just got this feeling, you know. Remember one night I slept, I sat in my room in a chair in the middle of my room with a knife in my hand. I, was, I had that type of feeling that something was about to happen. And it never does. You know, I think that's just... I talked to Kathleen Martin, and she, she assumed that I probably have, like, a, a PTSD, a post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, I haven't been diagnosed or anything by a physician, but I think I kind of fit that a little bit. You know, it's, I can't shake it. I, it's been 25 years. I'm still terrified every day you know it's just freaking a lot of weight and then i have to function you know at work 
outside. I'm fine until I'm home by myself. That's when everything goes. Have you got security cameras? Like, no, that's another thing. I that's something I wanted to do. But if I saw a security camera and saw them walking through my house, like I. I wouldn't be able to stay here anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how freaked out I would be. It's better off. Better off if I don't know. You know, because like I couldn't handle that. Like if I saw I had a video, even though that would be absolutely tremendous on all types of levels. Personally, that would just. You know, I couldn't imagine how bad I would be. I would, I would like probably just get up and leave. Try to live somewhere else. Like it would. I don't know. I don't know why I can't. That's the thing. Like I see people get interviewed, and they're pretty calm and like. They don't seem too uh, scared or concerned about what happened to them. You know, they just seem like they joke around a lot, or you know. I I guess they haven't been affected like I have. You know. There's got to be somebody else out there who feels the same way somewhere. Yeah, that's kind of one of the main reasons I really want to do this. Because like the mental part, like the emotional effects, terrible. You know, like I said, it ruined, ruined my life. I feel like I didn't get a fair shot. I, I definitely think that you need to have a look at the comment section when this video goes out because i'm sure there's a be a lot of people there'll probably be a couple of dicks but there always is but i'm sure there'll be a lot of supportive people um i'm i i'm leaning towards the hypnotherapy um but I, that is completely it's your call man um but i thought about even like a lie detector test or something just i don't think you're lying I'm not. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody don't watching this will think you're lying. But just to, so I can be like, here, you know, this is the only thing I can do to validate my story. I have like, you know, I do have that scar. I'm like 99% sure that scar has definitely something to do with what happened to me. I'm like, you know, because I wasn't there the day before. And the scar is like precise. Like laser, one inch long. You know, oh, try to take a picture of it, but I don't think nobody wants to see that. Well, that's up to you, mate. Um, well, yeah. it's uh, it's pretty low on my back, like it's yeah. almost in my butt. So yeah, I, yeah, you told me. Um, yeah, so I, I was gonna, you know, if you just I said it, if you just said it's 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 on my chest or something like that, I'd say said as a picture, but yeah, yeah. that's personal, man. I and mean, like, I do have the picture. You can't see it, but you know, it's nothing. I don't even share it with anybody. It's not very flattering, but it's there. I, 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 this story, it, honestly, it it really intrigues me. It does to to the to the point where I feel like I I don't need if if you got hypnotized, you might learn something. What happened that night? Um, but I understand that the same I understand you not wanting to know because of your anxieties when you're going to sleep if it's something bad you don't want to know about that I completely yeah. get it yeah, when I go to sleep it's like probably the worst part of my day I like literally use all my strength to fight my eyes from closing it's terrible you know, it's just like I'll fall asleep and I'll wake up a second later, like alert. Like I feel like as soon as I close my eyes, I'm completely vulnerable. I'll, even though what happened to me, I wasn't even sleeping. I was wide awake. But for some reason, I feel like when I close my eyes, it's like a free fall of like anything that happened. I fight it. I, like, I don't get done with sleep. I said I lost a couple of jobs just because I was sleep during the day and stay up all night. Just because I'm paranoid, you know, it's affected relationships to the point where I had to explain, you know. And my last girlfriend, uh, she didn't believe me. I kind of held that against her. You know, she's like, 
I believe that you believe what you think happened. And she would not even, you know, the other two, like I said, they've seen David's experience something. They believe me, you know, but that kind of sucked. You know, that's, that's why I'm hesitant to tell people because there's people who don't believe in aliens at all. And there's nothing you can tell them that will make change their mind otherwise unless they're on the news, like, you know, or everyone sees something, like, <clears throat> which I understand, you know. And also, I think the subject is flooded with a lot of BS. So, you know, I feel like one of the reasons I didn't want to do this at first, I would get shuffled in with the rest of the BS. And, you know, my true story will not be able to be singled out from all the bullshit. You know, I didn't want to be just thrown in with the rest of the people who say, like, you know, they hang out with them. And, you know, like, I've heard so many crazy stories. You know, I'm afraid to get bunched in with that category. So, uh, yeah. but you 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 do not think that they are they have the best intentions in your head? No. They, they I don't know if it's it is purposely done or what, but all the BS makes it so everything sounds like BS. You know. Like all the fake UFO stuff. UFO, I mean, YouTube's flooded with fake UFOs. I could watch fake UFOs all day if I wanted, you know? There might be that one or two real ones mixed in there. But you're not going to know. It's going to look like BS like everything else, you know? It just gets lost with everything else. And that's the way I look at it. Have you ever spoke with anybody that's had anything similar happen to them, to you? That you you know is not bullshitting you. No, that's another thing. You know, it's like almost like a oh feeling like you're alone almost. I guess like you know when this all happened, I thought by this time something would have happened, some evidence. I thought by now, and I feel like it's worse now than it was before because like. I have yet to hear any stories that I find believable, you know. Um, I'm hoping like, at some point with me doing these interviews, I can get enough people that have these stories that maybe, I don't know, I can get a group set up totally free where you guys can just, I don't know, talk you know, between yourselves. Oh. And in, in my in my position it's hard to confide in somebody a hundred percent if there's a chance they're bullshitting me, you know? It's like I feel like it'd be hard to pour my heart out to someone claiming they've been through what I've been through, but I'm skeptical of what they're I should I should probably be the least skeptical person. I'm probably the worst out of everybody. Like I don't believe anything. Nothing sounds right to me, you know? Like, like the reptilian stuff and I've seen like heard all types of stories and I just always say BS maybe I'm wrong for that I don't know but uh, it's hard to pin like give 100% into someone else's story that doesn't match up with mine or if I feel theirs is a little more out there than mine it still could be true you know I yeah. feel like my story is a simpler story compared to most, you know? Um, yeah, it's just, I, I feel like it's all mixed together, like, you know, especially the conspiracy theory label over everything. It's just, even if there's real stories out there or real UFO videos, I feel like it all gets lost in the shuffle. I don't know if it's meant to happen that way or that's why, you know, I was so hesitant to come out because I was like, you know, I know people aren't going to believe me no matter what I say. I don't, I don't want to be looked at that way, but there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I accept it. But it's like, damn, like I'm telling you the real shit, and someone's going to tell me all, oh, you know, I don't believe you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do that, man. I, I'm, I not saying, I'm not saying your followers specifically. I'm saying like the no, population I, I, in I general. No, I think. Um, if you're telling the right people, you know, 
caring people, they'll they will listen. Um, I mean, I understand how hard it would be to tell uh, family. My my dad, I would, if anything like that happened to me, I'd probably find it extremely hard to tell my father that because my dad is a bit, he's a strange one. <laughs> and it would just it would just change the dynamic of the family. And the relationship. Everything. I get yeah, it's, I'd rather just leave it alone and, you know, I want to tell them, but I would, I would like to tell them, but look, they don't believe me and look at me funny. You know, I just don't want to. And none of them have ever spoke about anything ever happening to them? No. No. Even though, I, I don't know, something might have. I have a feeling maybe one of them. It's just a feeling. No. I hear a lot of people say it's like a hereditary problem. Like, you know, if it happens to you, it means it happens to one of your parents or probably happened to one of their parents. I don't, know if I, believe, I don't know if I believe that or not, but it's a possibility, but they never say anything. And I would hate to ask them. Was, like, if they said yes, I, think, I don't think I can handle that either. You know, it's just overwhelming. I think it might be nice yeah. to have like, like that common ground, though. Um, have you have you ever, have you told your parents about the ghost story? You don't know any of this. I, I, I think the ghost story might be kind of just like a. Um, I mean, icebreaker, I guess. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> I once saw a ghost. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I fight with that a lot in my head. You know. It's always a conflict. I want to do this, but then at the same time, I don't. It's like this, you know, interview. I wanted to do it, but I didn't. You know, I sent an email, and you, when you replied, I was like, oh, shit, he replied. It's like, it, it's real now. It's like, you know, what am I going to do? Mate, that email intrigued me, honestly. Um, I, I get emails out for people asking to come on that have just seen a UFO in the sky, and it's a really interesting story, and I'm like, you can send me a video, you know. Um, I've had that before. Where someone sent me a video explaining what they saw, and I can that that's great. I can put that up just for a little video. But I can't interview somebody just that saw a UFO. Yeah, because the I interview won't last very long. If you plan on, you know, pursuing interviews with people who claim to be abducted, or abducted, I think you got a pretty tough job, man. You gotta, you know. Well, it's not my job. It's my hobby. I, I, I love to be my job. You, that's what I'm saying. You like it to be your job. I know you put a lot of work into everything, but it's like you gotta, Take you gotta deal with a lot of like shuffle through the bullshit to find that one good story that makes everything worth it. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I hate to see people interview someone and they're just BSing them, man. I'm just, I get angry. Like I get, it's real personal. Like. I'm like, dude, why are you wasting this dude's time? Like, you know that shit didn't happen. Uh, but at the same time, you got, they got to be interviewed. You have to go through everybody and do the process. And you know. well, This is the thing. I mean, I, I want to get the stories that are, are really quite out there, you know, because I think if I'm labeling myself as an alien channel, you know, I need we need to explore these stories and some of them will just probably be you know I might get somebody on that's absolutely you know bonkers I might get somebody on that's just a, just a liar I might get somebody on that's actually telling the truth yeah it's a, it's a crapshoot <laughs> pretty much but you know yeah. I, I mean you'll know you'll know what who's lying and who's not you know you see me got good judgment so you know it is what it is I mean I've been watching BS stories for just like over 20 years of just nonsense you know it's like I, I remember i used to listen to a popular radio show that deals with this subject and there was the craziest people calling in like this one lady called in and talked two hours how she was an actual alien you know i'm just like what the hell is going on like it's impossible to filter it there's no way 
you gotta take it all in and take none of it in. Yeah, I'm sure I'll probably have one of them at some point when I'm doing this. Somebody will ring up and, and somebody somebody will come on that'll tell me that they're an alien. Um, it was an awesome story. I mean, it was definitely. I'll need more of that. <laughs> it was definitely entertaining, but at the same time, I'm like, I feel like that hurts me. When, when I get the opportunity to talk to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, as as well, you hear these stories that are just absolutely wild, and but then at the same time, I do ask myself this: you know, maybe there is some wild stories because if they are there and they are real, maybe somebody remembers something, or somebody maybe they went a little bit further and did something else. I mean, the Travis Walton, for for example. Do you believe Char- Travis Walton? Yeah, that's one of the few I do believe. I mean, that is, that's an amazing story. I don't, you know, real quick, as far as I know, I haven't seen a movie or a TV show or anything that pro- projects aliens as you would describe a typical gray alien never as far as i know i haven't seen a movie like that or a tv show it's always something off even the travis walton thing yeah well the travis walton uh, fire in the sky movie is was travis was pissed off about that yeah like when i saw that i was it was like you know i'm scared to watch that kind of stuff i'm like it's like a horror movie i'm looking away like i don't want to see faces it bothers me but when I saw the movie, I saw what they looked like. I was like, what the F is this like? You know, I think that's strange because people talking about grays has been going on forever. But when have you seen a movie that has them in it? An alien movie, you know? I think, I think that's strange. Yeah, m- maybe not watch The Communion that I recommended before. Yeah. Don't, don't watch it, mate. Um, I remember... Uh, what, what did I try to watch? The Fourth Kind. That was, I tortured myself watching The Fourth Kind. <laughs> like, I tortured myself watching some of this stuff. I feel like I have to, you know? I, do you know what? I, I And I, whenever anybody is telling a story and it rings bells with a film, I've watched every single alien film going. I don't think, in series. I know them all. Um, but I think you're right. I don't think I don't think any of them are getting it right. I think they get the the, the certain bits. I mean, Close Encounters of the uh, 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 Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I think is very very like close to what some real stories. Um, mm. And and ET is hitting. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think they they do they they are partial to a to a beer. Um, mm-hmm. But that's a, that goes back to like what I think I saw as them being not natural, I guess them being like artificial. But that's the vibe I get. I didn't think that before, but like I said, if I keep playing it over in my head, I try to get all the information I can. And by just looking at the face, how they didn't move, I feel like they're not the actual beings. I feel like they're like, you know, they're doing their job. You know, like if you're if you're so advanced, why go do it yourself if you don't have to? You know, I'm sure they think humans are barbarians. <laughs> they, you know, they don't want to get their hands dirty, so they might not be the actual beings, but maybe there's something else that looks more natural, more facial features, more strings, possibly. So a good friend of mine, and I can't, I can't name him. Um, one day he might, he might tell the story on this channel. Um, he's not a YouTuber or anything like that. Um, but he described them as paper. Really? Yeah. He's, he told me a story um, one night, and he said that they are like paper, the way they move everything it, it was bizarre and something when you said when they had the faces about the south park 
could could you see like three D ness to them or you know I thought about this before is like n- not really. I mean I know there's no you features, know. but say for example it was like for example you know what? this year. Yes. Okay, yes, okay. It. it won't pick it up because it's not a real. Uh, I gotta see it. Yeah, but you can see it's 3D, can't you? Yes. Yeah. Did it look? Did they look 3D? The eyes did. Okay. The eyes. The, you know, if you want to use a paper analogy, it looked like big black lenses, maybe sitting on a piece of paper. Because I, mean, I can't. The, the shape of the head was so ridiculously perfect. That's, I'm, I'm stuck on that. It just blows my mind. So I didn't see. There's no bone structure or facial features for me to even get a a depth, I guess, perception of like maybe this back of their head. That makes sense. Yeah. But it looked like the, their eyes were like sitting on top of their face. Is what I kind of got from them. They're very like, like glossy, I guess. It was like a not a reflection, but you know. But there was no like eyelid or any. It was just like a eye sitting on her face. There was no eyelid or absolutely nothing. You know. Um, yeah, and the another thing too, the. I didn't look directly at the the second one to the right, but I got a real weird vibe that it might have been like a, a female, maybe. I don't know how much I really believe that, but it's just it was significantly shorter than the one on the left, and its head was much slender. The one on the left. The head got larger, much larger at the top, and the one on the right was more slender. It didn't get as big. Um, and the way it was standing in front of the taller one, like a prom picture, you know, that's visually what it was. Now, does that mean it was a girl? I, probably not, but my brain kind of thinks, you know, that, that's what it looked like. And they, um, they were gray in color, were they? Dark gray, dark gray, almost like the color of your background, pretty close to that. Um, I always had that weird, like I have a feeling that they were there to watch what was going to happen. I don't, I don't know how to explain it because they didn't move or do nothing, but it's, it's just a feeling I had. Um. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's just visually that's how my. Do you think you were abducted? Yeah, I think for sure. You know, it was just I put everything together to happen. Waking up on my couch, having a, a fresh scab on my back, um, my bed vibe, bed jumping up, you know. Or maybe they did something, and maybe they, I never left my house. Maybe it happened in my house. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm like, how did I even get to the living room? You know, like, did they carry me there? Did I get dropped out? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a million questions <laughs> out of like a small period of time that I have. Um, I believe I was abducted. Well, I believe it happened. Before and after, I kind of do. Um, I'm thankful I don't remember <laughs> all them instances. Like there's people that remember or claim to remember every single time. Like it's clockwork. Like they come to the bedroom, they come beam me through my walls, take me to the ship, they'll show me some stuff, drop me back off, you know, call at least later, come back again. Like I only remember that one time, but I don't think that was my first time. When I was like 
elementary school, I kept having a reoccurring dream of me looking out my window to like 10 UFOs like outside my window. There were different heights in the sky, you know, some were closer, some were further, but they covered the whole sky pretty much. I had that dream, I don't know how many times. How, how old were you then? Seven or eight. But it wasn't, the dream wasn't from my point of view, it was like from behind me. So I was like looking at myself, looking out the window, which I usually, I never had dreams like that besides that one. Usually all my dreams are my perspective. I don't know if that's how other people's are, but this one was like the perspective of behind me looking at myself. And that, between then and, you know, I was 15, there's nothing that I know of happened. You know, I don't. So, so in this in this dream, you just look out your window and see. Okay. And I, I'm pointing, pointing at the sky, looking out the window, and they're just sitting there. You know, I don't know if it's just a dream or it's something I saw. I don't know. But the dream, I had the same dream for a couple of years when I was a kid, like repeatedly. Like I remember I had like a, a red striped long sleeve shirt on in my dream. I just point at the sky and just be sitting there. But once again, that never crossed my mind until after the incident. You know, it's just. Do you know, can you remember anything kind of from that dream other than just looking out the window and seeing these UFOs? Did anything else happen or did you just wake up then? That's all it was. It was just me looking at myself, looking out the window at UFOs. And then there was part of the dream would be from the perspective behind me. And then part of the dream was my perspective of just seeing the UFOs in the sky. 30 second dream, you know, that was all it was to it. But I had this, it was like the same one over and over. As a boy of seven or eight, what did you think they were? I never even thought about it. I mean, do you, was, do you, do you just think the UFO, do, do you just look back at that dream now and go, they were UFOs? Or can you remember thinking, it's probably hard for you to remember that, but. Can you remember back at being eight years old thinking they were spaceships? Or? No, I knew there were UFOs, 100%. You know, as I remember the dream, I'll look out the window at UFOs. You know, it was just as simple as that. You know, when I wake up the next day, it wasn't even something that crossed my mind. It was just a dream. Then I put, put zero thought into it. But you've never had this dream since? Uh, I've had uh, there's there's one time uh, I was with a, a female, you know, and uh, I remember I, I closed my eyes for a second. I remember the second I closed my eyes, I just saw like an alien face. Oh, while oh, you, I was, while, you while I was okay. while you were with this, so yeah, you with a, with a, with a real female. Yes, not having. Uh, I thought you were dreaming it, about female. <laughs> no, no, no. Having like a you know, intimate moment, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I closed my eyes to blink, and like there was just an alien's face. Like it's all I saw it wasn't even on my mind at the time. That, was it the same it, face? It didn't. So no. The no, it was. It looked more like a. Uh, it had facial features. You know, it had. It looked like a. Like an old old man, I guess, kind of like a lot of wrinkles in the face. Maybe that's more typical of pictures you might see. You know, I don't know if that's me being paranoid as hell, but that was not the time or place for me to even have the idea pop in my head. I wasn't even thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that always bothered me. So I didn't know if that was something that was real being maybe projected to me or I'm just so paranoid that I can blink my eyes and just see a face of an alien. <laughs> it's hard. I have a lot of stuff like that where it's hard to tell if I'm just nuts. I'm not nuts, but just so paranoid. You know, I hear things all the time. I, I smell things sometimes. Like sometimes I have like, I get like a smell of like sulfur, like heavy like sulfur smell. 
I remember I, I Googled it and so, I saw an article or someone was talking about, you know, they might have a scent like that. I don't know. I never see nothing. I never, you know, I smell it, but it's happened a few times, like strong. Is, is this it's, like in the middle of the night? You, you wake up? No, no. Better, middle of the day. Middle of the day, you know. I get like a big whiff, like a sulfur chemical. It's been in different places I lived, you know. It's happened maybe four times, I would say. But the smell was strong and it would go away. And then my brain starts racing, like, you know, start checking rooms and checking closets and, you know, and nothing's ever there. So I'm at a point now, it's like, sometimes I think I see stuff, but I always think I'm just so paranoid that my brain's just, out of whack and, you know, so it's tough. I could definitely relate with that. I mean, there's, there's times when, I mean, I used to daydream a hell of a lot and some of the daydreams used to be so, so real. Um, I've actually had dreams before myself uh, and but since I've had this channel, so I, I, I put it down to the stuff that I'm watching but I mean, probably about two years ago, I had a dream that I was just outside in my street in the middle of the night on my own, wearing a pair of like joggers, no, no T-shirt. I, I sleep with no T-shirt. To be honest with you, I sleep probably naked most of the time. <laughs> don't, don't tell everybody. Um, but yeah, I'm outside and I'm just looking up and there's like a, a craft quite big in my street um i've had that dream once but that dream was so so real and when i woke up the next day i told my wife and i'm like i wonder if it, it what if it was real you know but i put it down to this channel and the stuff the people that i speak to the movies that i'm watching mm -hmm. i don't get that from you i get that something it's quite disturbing you know the difference between I know the difference between that dream that I had and you know me drinking a beer now mm -hmm. I, I know it's real um, I'm sure you've you've um, questioned yourself and thought yep yeah, that was real it's as real as yeah. fresh air you know I try to find any excuse for anything that happened to to me, to not be real. And everything is just, it's too obvious to me. It's like, there's like the shadow going down my wall and all that. Like I just got home from work. I was home for like five minutes. I wasn't tired. I wasn't drunk. You know what I'm saying? Like I just got home from work. I just, just took my boots off and I see the shadow of my bedroom running down my wall and going down the stairs. I'm like, how do I, how do I try to explain that that's not what I saw? This is, it's impossible. There's no way. There's no. I have no explanation like for that. It's just you know, like there's a lot of there's some other things that happen, but it's stuff that it's not a hundred percent you know real to me. There's like it might have not happened. You know, might have been something else. I just brush all that stuff to the side. You know. The stuff I'm telling you is stuff that like I'm wide awake. I'm sitting up. I'm just, I, like I, I made eye contact with so much, so many messed up things, and I'm thinking about it. You know, it's there's no there's no other excuse or any, I can't think of anything. John, if you do decide um, to get hypnotized, would you come back on? Uh, to be honest with you, I doubt I would want to get hypnotized, but if for some reason I did, I would definitely come back on. I feel like I'll be opening a can of worms I don't want to open, you know. Yeah. It would be, I think it would be good for ufology in general, maybe, that I can explore more of my story and get more pieces to the puzzle. Like I said, I don't think I can handle it, man. If you can't handle it, stay well away. Stay well away. That's my advice. Stay well away. I told you in my email, I'm a 
afraid to have kids. I think that's terrible. <sighs> you know, I, I couldn't, if I, if I had a kid tell me they saw something, that'd be it for me. You know, I can't even protect myself. How can I protect my child? I would love to have children. I like kids, you know. Yeah. But, for, like, that, that's, that's what the thing. Like, you know, I want to have a kid, but that's, like, the number one thing in my mind. How can I protect it from something I can't protect myself from? You know, I can't imagine a kid, like, I had a kid that walk in and say, Dad, there's my friend was in my room, you know, he had big eyes. He comes sees me all the time. Dude, I'll lose my mind. I'll be done. I'll lose an idea. I'm not, I can't do that. I'm hoping some, there'll be some, somebody will, somebody will watch this and I don't know, they'll, they'll, they'll send this video to, somebody high up or whatever that sit that wants to help you out properly rather than just want to get your information um i mean i don't know how much it's been 25 years man i've been trying to get over this every day and i haven't budged a bit i don't know how i can <laughs> besides just forgetting everything you know like it's part of my life now this is how i live it's just you know, when I emailed you, it's like, you know, my day-to-day -day routine kind of. It's just me going through the motions of how I live. It, it doesn't seem, I almost forget why I sleep on my couch. I'm so used to it, you know. It's, it's, you know but when I write it down or talk about it, it just, sounds, you know, terrible. But I'm so, oh. so used to it. It's nuts, like... I go when I go to sleep. I go and I go into my bedroom very slowly. You know, I try to get in there before eight or nine o'clock. I don't like going in there late. I like keep my blankets and shit in there and just bring it out. Make make my bed on the couch like it's nothing. I don't even think about why I'm even doing it anymore. You know, I think I think that's kind of crazy. Like, no, if that's what if that's what makes you feel better, so, you know. Keep doing it. I, I couldn't sit in my bedroom. I, I, I would never sleep. It, 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 I would torture myself. I'd be staring at the window. Like I do that during the day sometimes. You know, I'd be sitting on my couch watching TV. I'll keep looking to the right every like 15, 20 minutes. Just real quick, quick glance. And check the hallway because like in my mind, I feel like I'm overdue for this to happen again. I feel like it can happen any second. I feel like I'm always waiting for it to happen. You know? <laughs> well, John, I mean, the, this this Skype chat that we've got going now, you know, I, I don't delete them. I chat with people that I, I've interviewed in the past still to this day. You ever just want to chat, just message me, mate. Even if you say, look, do you mind if we have a beer one night? I'll come on. Um, but I, I'm hoping that this video, something happens from this that will help you. Um, and... Um, before um, we end this chat, and I'll have a little chat with you after uh, this video, we've finished the interview. But is there anything else you want to add? Um, you know, I think if anyone who's had an experience, who's you know, thinks by themselves that they're not, I felt that way forever. Like, even though I think it happens to a decent amount of people. I don't know anybody it's happened to. I haven't talked to anybody it's happened to. So that lonely, the feeling of loneliness kind of sucks, you know. Even if one person, you know, it might help them to feel like they're not by themselves, I think this whole video would be worthwhile just for that single thing alone. You know, it's like it's hard to talk to people about it, you know. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm able to come on here and talk to you. And I've never talked to anybody like this before, like this detail ever. This is going on 25 years. You know? well, I'm really glad you have. I mean, as much as I'm trying to turn this into a business because I, I love the subject, I, I, I honestly hope that 
regardless of the comedy that I do in some of the videos that I do, but I hope some of the videos that I do do kind of hit people in the and give people the right. I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um, this this interview is kind of not me for six. Um, but I, I hope something happens good from this. I really do. Yeah. I, I want to yeah. thank you for coming on. Um, and it, you need anything, you just message me. Right? If you need a chat, just, just let me let me know. As long as I'm not dealing with kids or whatever, you know. Yeah. This this whole lockdown, being daddy daycare, is not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but I'm I'm just about managing it. Um, yeah. But yeah, John, thank you so much for for coming on and telling everybody your story. I hope you'll come on again sometime as well. Yeah, would I appreciate you, would, you uh, having me on. You know. Would you want to go any on any other shows, do you think? Depends on who it would be. I'm not, you know, just, there's maybe one or two people, maybe, but you know, I don't mention names, but like, I don't, there's not too many channels I trust. You know, there's some right. big, there's some big channels out there that I think knowingly put fake stuff on there. I want nothing to do with that type of situation. You know? I don't know. It depends on the person. I got like one or two people in mind, but. Cool. Well, you can yeah, we'll touch base with on that. And if you want to, I can, you know, I'll have, a few, I'll have a couple of words with them because I think, I think getting the story out, um, I think yeah. it will help getting the story out. And I think when, when, when you get the people, the response that I think you will get of people believing you. I, I take a position like, you know, I can watch somebody's channel. And I just see like BS after BS after BS. And then I think like, I have the power to contribute to this person by giving them a true story. Even if people don't believe it, I know that you got a real story, which makes me feel good, you know? Like at the end of the day, I guess I all right. You have a real interview with somebody who had a real experience. 100%, I know that, you know? And I, I feel good about that, you know? It's, I, I've tried to research for so long, it's just, the BS is just overwhelming. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a minefield. So, like, I only had this idea maybe the past six months about even doing something like this. I just got frustrated. I was watching somebody's channel. I seen something that was so fake, and I'm like, you know what? I think it's time for me to say something to somebody so I know there's some truth out there. I'm sure there's plenty of truth out there, but I know this is truth. Like, you know, it kind of feels good. Yeah. Well, I've got a couple of other people coming on in the next month or two. We try and arrange times, schedules. Um, but um, well, there's more than a couple of people co coming on, but there's a couple of them that have very intriguing situations, which you'll, I'm I'm hoping will ring some truths. But John, thank you ever so much for coming on. Um, guys, I'm Alien Addict. Um, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. You can check out the Patreon page. John, thank you for that, by the way. Um, you didn't have to do that, but I appreciate uh, it. You're, you're helping me out more than you know me. No, this mate, you, like you, a, you're helping like me a, out. It's like a therapy session almost, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I meant what I say. And I, if, if you need anything, just hit me up. You've got my Skype. Um, guys, good night. God bless. Mind the bugs don't bite. I'm alien at it. Thank you, mate.